Okay. Um, so, wait two weeks and visit the court. It actually gives me a time frame. That's nice of them. Uh, more than nothing. Uh, wait, we want to do the ones with the with the hourglass, right? Because they will disappear at the end of this chapter. Or act. My cheap phone has good connection and there's almost no delay. Hmm. That's weird. I wonder if it is, like, just something to do with the quality of the Wi-Fi receiver in the phone. Ugh. When Betty says, oh, that's cool about things, do you keep track in the hopes that one day... <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> now I get what you mean, Dubs. <laughs> no, that'll never happen. I'm not even going to trick myself into thinking that one day she'll say, oh, that's cool, to something I've done. Unless, of course, it's D&D &D related. She tells me D&D &D stuff I've done is cool all the time. <laughs> But anything outside of that game? No. No, 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 no. It's all good. I am just, uh, I am just, you know, 100% mediocre in Betty's eyes. And that's the way it's going to stay. Um, so go to Heaven's Edge. Okay, Crescent of the Abyss. Wait for events to unfold. Fair enough. Middle game. Build the main stables in Dresden. Form the Staff Council. Order the Crusades craftsmen to improve a relic. Liberate the region. Okay. Um, also, if I have you on my phone and Xbox, the phone plays things, then five seconds later it will play on the TV. Oh, that's weird. So I wonder if... Well, by that logic, it must just mean that your phone's... Oh, no, but then again, if your Xbox is having to receive, receive the stream, process it, and then put it back out again on a much larger scale... Your phone's only receiving it on a small screen, isn't it? So it's not it's not taking as much bandwidth. So maybe that's why. Maybe that's why there's a delay. Possibly. Um, Solomon. Give Irabeth her family's sword. Oh shit, yeah, I do need to do a few things in the actual exact same Wi-Fi signal too. Yeah, that is weird. I can only assume that it's because of like, it's because of the amount of data that's needed to process across across the Wi-Fi for it to play on a phone as opposed to it on a big TV screen. Or just like, well, yeah, big compared to like your phone, obviously. Um, unless you have a TV that is the size of your phone, in which case I am amazed I need to see this. Um, wait for KLS's schemes to be revealed. I don't think KLS is scheming anything. I think it was Fa, Fawn. I think it was him. I think he's the evil one. Find something else that once belonged to, to Rendelev. Know thy enemy. Search for traces of unusual demon activity. Find out how the demons are sneaking into Crusader territory. Find the missing Crusaders. The dragon hunt. Okay. Bad spirit. Talk to Irabeth. Well, I need to talk to Irabeth anyways, so maybe I need to just go and see her. Um... Just means I get more of your beefy, bassy voice. They know what the people want. Oh my god, it actually shows up on the map. The stupid, sexy court of the neighborino. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I'm starting to think people just come to this stream for the voice. It's nothing else. It's it's just my voice. It's just my voice. And then and then every once in a while, I get someone who comes in and says, "Your voice is too bassy." I'm like, okay. Thank you for letting me know. Would you like me? Is there anything I can do about that? Change your voice. Change my voice? I can't do that, guys. I can't change my fucking voice. I can't help that the level of a certain chemical in my body made my voice very deep from the age of, like, 13 onwards. I can't help that. It's nature. It happened. I'm sorry, that you feel the need to come into my stream and tell me that my voice is too deep and bassy. Fucking chipmunks. <laughs> um, yeah, we know him. His name's his name's Regal, <laughs> the inbred cum suck. He is always the enemy. <laughs> but yeah, three hours to get back to Dresden. Nice. Uh, oh, that's the dragon hunt. That is both things for Erebeth. Let's go there. Well, let's go there. Um, what am I doing next week? What am I doing next week? Mon uh, Sunday and Monday, I have off from streaming. Tomorrow, 
I'm not too sure what I'm going to do tomorrow. Honestly. Kind of, because I can't do a date night stream tomorrow. We're not able to do one. Um, I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll do some more Pathfinder. Or maybe I'll put another poll up in the Discord. Or maybe I'll just go ahead and play something else that was voted highly for. We'll see. But yeah, Tuesday, we're going to do some D&D. We're going to do a D and d stream where I'll probably make some maps and stuff um, and talk about all things nerdy and D&D &D related. Um, Wednesday, I will be back with Pathfinder. Thursday is going to be Hollow Knight. Friday is The Walking Dead. And Saturday is... Uh, oh, yeah, next Saturday I'm off. Yeah, I'm off next Saturday. Next Saturday is the weekend. I shall be celebrating my anniversary with Betty. So I will be off. I will not be around next Saturday, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, how is inbred cumsock one of the nicer insults I've made you read out? Am I the bad person here? <laughs> I wouldn't say bad person, Dubs. I would say most offensive, probably. <laughs> but no, I have to say, like inbred cum inbred cumsock is pr is probably one of the probably one of the milder insults that I've had to read out. Definitely one of the mild milder insults in terms of regal. Regal is the source of much vinegar, like for the whole community. Um, let me see here. A sharp-looking kitsune gives you a quick, business-like bow. Commander, the matters be before us are urgent, so let's not stand on ceremony. I am Lady Konami. Konami. Konami? Konami. I'm Lady Konami. Konami. Uh, the official attaché of Nerosian. Here are my credentials. She presents a scroll adorned with Galfrey's seal. Her Majesty has instructed me to lead your headquarters diplomatic council. Uh, sausage says, um, Sausage says, Honestly, I was surprised when Lady Economy asked me to join this council, but I will do my best to fill the shoes of a trained diplomat. Um, yeah, strange. I got invited to the council too. I'm sure foreign ambassadors will be thrilled to see my face and my manners. Uh, Lady Konami, you you haven't mistaken me for some other crusader land, have you? I, like many nobles, have been trained in diplomacy, and, in fact, I hold the title of Royal Emissary. It is passed down the Iron Day line. I must say that prior to this day I employed my diplomatic skills solely to undermine Mendev's international reputation. It is time to break this habit. I imagine preventing international scandals will be just as interesting as causing them. Who knows, I might even enjoy it. Um, oh, that, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> yep. You know, I need to learn to not read out every message in chat because some of it is just, some of it is just vinegar and salt. Some of it is just vinegar, salt, and rage. And so if you guys ever see me, just go, oh boy, yep. Mm hmm. It's because I read something in chat, which I immediately am like, yeah, that's a spicy meatball. Um, Catherine, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure what Catherine is saying is not vinegary. I got some flavor stuff for my cat's food, and he's gonna get fat because he's eating so much. It's chicken and cheese flavor. Wait, cats like cheese? Is it lasagna flavored? I read somewhere once cats love lasagna and hate Mondays. I think I read that too. In fact, actually, I think Bill Murray did a movie about it, right? Um. Boy, oh boy. Uh, what's the Diplomatic Council for and why do I need it? To solve matters of politics, of course. The Crusade is more than just battles and sieges. It is the largest military project in all of Avastan, funded by the treasuries of more than a dozen major powers. And each one of those powers, in addition to seeking victory over the demons, also pursues its own goals. It isn't chicken or cheese, but it's flavored like it. Oh yeah, no, no, I, I, yeah, I figured it was just like the flavoring. Um, yeah, I, I was hoping it wasn't actual, actual cheese. Apparently, apparently dairy is like not good for cats at all, right? Like even though the common thing is like the stereotypical thing for a cat is to give them milk, like a bowl of milk. It's not good for them, apparently. Two movies, I believe. Oh yeah, the second one. The second one was um, 
in England, right? I think the Queen's the Queen's cat. He he got replaced he replaced the Queen's cat or something like that. Because apparently the Queen has cats now instead of a corgi or corgis. I know our sausage dog loves cheese, but it makes his farts absolutely reek. It isn't good for cats, no. They are lactose intolerant once they get past like 10 weeks. Wow. Wow, wow, we wow. Although I think it's the same roughly for dogs, right? Like they, they are also kind of like, they have some form of intolerance to, to dairy. Um, let me see. The diplomatic council will manage this tangle of political interests and prevent this crusade from losing favor of influential benefactors. And while we're at it, ensure that Nerosian remains satisfied with the state of affairs. After all, for the last hundred years, the entirety of Mandevian politics has revolved around the Crusades in some shape or form. That is why the capital has sent me here, to observe, offer suggestions, and keep the diplomatic situation under con control. I see. You've been sent to keep an eye on me. Whatever gave you that idea, Commander? I'm not an overseer. I'm your loyal advisor. I do not intend to meddle in the way you run things. Just consult you in cases where the prices of error are too high. Put your trust in me and we'll get along swimmingly. After all, none of us here want to see Chiliax and Druma at each other's throats, trying to settle their dispute by using their influence on us as political leverage. Am I wrong? And I doubt you would like that, or like it, if we made enemies in the ranks of the Nerosian nobility, who would attempt to undermine your war effort. This won't happen as long as you trust my experience. Boy, oh boy. Uh, humans have an intolerance to dairy too. Only babies have the ability to process lactose. I'm pretty sure he's a cannibal, as he adores sausages and kranskis. <laughs> my god. I didn't know, I didn't know humans were just naturally intolerant to, uh, to lactose. Uh, goes mental when we give them to him. Does a little dance when, while he eats them. Jesus. Sausage dog doing a little dance when he eats sausages. Yeah. Uh, tell me more about the... No, I don't really want to know more about the Royal Council. Um, I have a question about the composition of this council. Uh, why did you choose land to join the council? That's the only question I really have. We diplomats call this trick Mysterious Gurundi Prince. During negotiations, it's always useful to have on your side a representative of some obscure but potentially populous and powerful nation. Without knowing what they're up against and how many mongrels there are, our diplomatic partners will have to contend with this dark horse. Wait, so he's basically just like, a, he's there, he's the bait, and, he's like the confusion. He's the wild card. So Mr. Lan will be our mongrel prince. If we're negotiating with foreign ambassadors and I make this sign, Lady Konomi crosses her fingers in an intri intricate gesture. You immediately start talking about how offensive their proposition is to the mongrel people. Do we have a deal, Mr. Lan? Lan scoffs and glowers at Lady Konomi. I suspected the word diplomat was synonymous with fraud, but I thought you would be deceiving me, not deceiving others with my help. No, that's not an option. I can represent the mongrels in negotiations, but I'm not going to lie through my teeth. Uh, everything is clear to me now. In that case, why don't we discuss our first pressing diplomatic issue? Oh boy, what's on the Council's agenda today? I hate to say it, Commander, but not everyone in Nerosian is pleased with your progress. Well, whoop de doo Some believe that, to use their words, you are out of control and fancy yourself an independent leader. It wouldn't surprise me if you encountered, encountered supply disruptions in the near future. I would suggest quelling their anger. Show the capital you haven't forgotten about the chain of command. For example, you could hold a parade in honor of Her Majesty. Yeah, or I could not waste the resources on something dumb like that. Um, if we need to demonstrate that we're keeping Nerosian in mind, why don't we invite the capital's high priest to Dresden for a religious festival? It'll be appropriate, and the church's support will shield us from the accusations of schemers. Panda to the naysayers? I think not. I propose we hold up a parade in your honor, Flanders. This is your victory, and if cousin Golfrey wants to show off in front of the soldiers, she's welcome to capture something of her own. Lan's eyes flash with anger. Are they out of their mind? We've got the whole of Dresden full of soldiers who need medicine, food, and weapons. Until everyone has been taken care of, we can't waste a single coin on pointless celebrations. Um, I kind of agree with Lan. 
Lan, spend the funds we have to help those in need. It's more important than any parades. A moment, Commander. I understand that you're used to being the highest authority in all matters. Yes, Lady Konomi. I am used to that because I am the Knight Commander. And as you said earlier, you are not going to try and butt into my decisions. So, kindly, shut off the fuck off up off and let me do what I do best, which is being El Neighborino. Which is to say, in charge. Um, I am a professional in this field. You are not. By ignoring my recommendations, you are not only deliberately seeking conflict with the capital, but disregarding common sense as well. I urge you to reconsider. Um, the needs of my soldiers are more important than the whims of your, of your bureaucrats from the couple. Lady Konomi's voice hardens. I cannot challenge your decision, however, I have no choice but to inform the capital that you have disregarded my recommendations. Actions like these are precisely what gave Nerosian cause for concern, Commander. I hope you will revise this defiant stance in future. No fucking chance. Go fuck yourself. Um, that's right. And everyone who's unhappy with our decisions can go ahead and leave the, their mansions in Nerosian and come here to tell us so in person. And if something happens to them along the way, we'll just have enough money to stitch their arms and legs back on. And with that, we can bring this meeting of the Diplomatic Council to a close. It is unfortunate that things here were so tense, but I'm sure we'll have many more opportunities to resolve any misunderstandings between us. Yeah. Something tells me I'm not going to enjoy being around her. The tall, gaunt half-elf salutes you solemnly. Commander. It is an honor to call this first meeting of the Military Council to order. I am Captain Odin. Odan? Odin? I think Odan. We'll go with Odan. And I've been serving under your command ever since the assault on the Grey Garrison. I'll do my best to be of as much use to you as possible in this role. Why am I Why am I going American for him as well? Lan is American. Lan has an American accent. I can't really, really do a great American accent. It's pretty shitty. But still, this guy is not. Oh great, of course he would be on the military council. The foundation of the military is cold calculation and discipline. These are the principles I will seek to impart to the Crusaders if we are to win this war. We must forget about mercy for our enemies, for our troops, and for ourselves. Well, Commander, your sister Sela is no renowned general, but she spent half her life tussling with evil. It looks like I'll be stepping up on behalf of all Iomidae's faithful here. I hope my advice will prove useful. The first issue on the Military Council's agenda is the reorganization of troops. Our infantry has been bled dry. The forces Her Majesty granted us were enough to take Dresden, but we need more troops to hold it. Furthermore, the army was assembled in great haste after the assault on Canabra and was never adequately equipped. Unfortunately, we don't have much time for redeployment. Our scouts report that a powerful Baylor, Koramzade, 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 that guy, is already preparing a retaliatory strike on Dresden. But we can rely on freshly conscripted Mendevian soldiers. They may not have the skill, but our strength as always lies in the number and the fervor of the volunteers joining the Crusades. We can't throw everyone into the meat grinder. We'll just get our youths killed for nothing. We need to select the best among the recruits, or even better, hold a contest. The bravest and the most capable will join the Crusaders. The death count is always highest in the infantry. Its purpose is to serve as a shield. It would be wise to invest our resources in hiring and training heavy footmen with shields to ensure maximum protection, even if it limits their mobility and makes them less threatening to the enemy. Oh boy. Um, mm, I want to hear the opinions of my adv advisors. Sila, do we... Oh no, you know... Uh, th that's just going to go back through what they've said. Never mind. So, we'll hold contests and select the most proficient warriors. That's champions. The main barracks provide weekly recruitment growth for champions. Powerful shock infantry. All footmen promote to champions. Okay, that's pretty cool. The main barracks provide weekly recruitment growth for shield bearers, staunch defensive infantry. All footmen are promoted to shield bearers. 
The main barracks provide weekly recruitment growth for conscripts, poorly trained but cheap and numerous infantry. All footmen are promoted to conscripts. I think we're going to go with champions. We want champions in this crusade. Proficient warriors. A cheeky smile blossoms on Sila's face. You know, I think I might hit the arena once or twice myself to test the rookies. It'll be a nice warm up. Captain Odon, Odon salutes you formally. Thank you for your time, Commander. When the reforms are finished and the ranks of our infantry are replenished, I will assemble the military council to discuss new decisions. Okay. Oh, who's this? Dorgalinda Stranglehold? What? What? Uh, no, I'm out of hard ciders. Well, time for a mega pint of rum. A mega pint of rum? Good God. <laughs> you having some trouble sleeping, Dubs? Oh, wait, I have to hydrate as well? At least I'm not hydrating on rum, I suppose. You'll sleep well after this. That's all I'm going to say. Dor Dorgalinda Stranglehold. A middle-aged dwarf. Okay. Hail, Commander. A middle-aged dwarf who has clearly seen some combat salutes you with one barely moving, bone-dry hand. On her face are huge, scarred claw marks. A black eye patch covers one eye, but she's watching you with the other, intent and somber. It's only 137. It's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> okay, man. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. It's still good. Um... Let me see. Dogal in the stranglehold, chair of the logistics council, at your service. We've got ourselves an ugly situation that requires your decision. Hopefully this council will benefit from my vast experience surviving with gear that consists of rocks and sticks, and where, my, where any dinner that's not squirming on your plate is considered a feast. All in all, kind of like our crusade. I won't lie to you, our logistics are a mess. We need more of everything. And what we do have is in disarray. Crates of provisions are rotting away in storehouses because some idiot quartermaster spilled beer on the papers. And fools are not the worst problem. There's also a fifth. Some officers grease palms to get a helmet with stylish plumage or a fancy blade from the Rosian. Meanwhile, that means our ordinary soldiers are being armed with barely more than kitchen knives, hammer and tongs. It's time to give the entire logistics staff that bum thrush. The question is, where do we find capable and honest people to replace them? Mmm. Yes, dwarves are we Scottish badasses. They're nobles and always Connery. Oh my god. Sean Connery. We certainly do need to bring Sean Connery into the mix. But which which dwarven character would we give? Sean's voice. I'm not too certain. Uh, Lan says. Let's get some veterans on the job. People who've had their fill on the front lines, and who know firsthand what life is like for a common soldier. What the rations taste like, and how the boots are always the wrong size. My suggestion. Maybe we should just give her Sean Connery's voice. Slightly feminine. But then again, dwarves don't really need feminine voices. Because they're dwarves, and stereotypically, they all look and talk the same, right? Um, I think that's what Gimli says, right? Dwarf, dwarven women are often not not spotted because of because they have beards as well. Um, my suggestion is to call some experienced, well-connected supply officers from Nerosian. Let them leave their cushy jobs in Mendev and work up a sweat for the good of the crusade. Uh, let me see. Um, experiences, intendants, all trainable units gain the only the essentials feat. Or all mercenary units gain equipment from the state. So plus 10% bonus to maximum hit points. Or plus one bonus to attack. And all saving throws. I think I want to go with, uh, yeah, veterans. Veteran quartermasters. Veterans know what's what. They won't do their comrades wrong. They'll see that they're always fed, healthy, and warm. I don't know what Land's voice is turning into. It's just offensive at this point, I think. Then it's decided, no matter what our new quartermasters are like, there's no possible way they can be worse than what we have now. The results will be reported to you, and if anything else comes up, I'll call the council right away. Okay, is that all of the councils dealt with? I think so, right? My god, today's stream has been 
has been character creation, character leveling, and uh, and just a just a shit ton of 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 admin that comes from leading the crusade, right? Turning American. I mean, Lan Lan is definitely going to be American based on his voice actor. I'm just trying to get it as close to that accent that he does as possible. As for as for Dog Alinda, one hundred percent, one hundred percent Sean Connery. Yeah, it's just been a logistic stream. A good old logistic stream for all those logistics nerds out there. Oh boy. Right. So, is there anything that I can, anything that I can sort of uh, that's going to be reasonably easy to do? Because I am aware of the time. Um. Let me see. So that's Kalesa. That's something that belonged to Terendalev. I thought I did have something that belonged to Terendalev. I thought I... F maybe I didn't. Hmm. Might need to go back and find something. Thank you, Dubs, for once again looking after my vocal cords. A cheeky two-sip. Okay. Search for traces of unusual demon activity. Any lead could be crucial. It's not possible that the demons have left no trace. You know what? This might be easier if we actually go to the, um... The map. The map and the map. I need the map. I need the map. Oh. Does this... Does this lower corruption? Let's try it. You there, beggar girl! That filthy bird of yours has befouled my tent. Wash this at once. Oh. Washing. When I was little, I loved doing the laundry with my mom. We had so much and fun. Big old stretch. Thanks for reminding me of those days. <laughs> Sorry, Amber. I didn't mean to interrupt you with my with my stretch. <laughs> uh. Okay. So everything's good. I think. Possibly. Oh shit, what's going on? Oh, no, another fucking cutscene. Is this is this why I should be leaving <laughs> Dresden and going somewhere else? Before you stands a tall, fit man whose dark hair is already tinged with grey. He greets you with a brisk military salute. Oh my god, this would have been Sean Connery's character. This this guy looks like Sean Connery's character from, from um, Highlander. <laughs> it actually does as well. Never mind, we're retconning it. This guy talks with Sean Connery's accent as well. My name is Captain Shellkind. I command the vanguard of a mercenary group called the Blackstone Company. We've come from And Andoran to assist you. Uh, why'd you join up with us? Queen Golfrey paid for our services, but please do not think we're fighting for gold alone. We are true sons and daughters of Andoran. Should the ideals of equality and resisting enslavement ring true in our hearts. We'll be glad to stand in the way of the demons who seek to force more kind into bondage. The bulk of our company made camp in Erosian, but the vanguard, consisting of our finest soldiers, if I may add, was put under your command. Ugh, why is Ember so wholesome? The one elf I'll allow and like. Mate, she's, she's just too good for this world. It warms my heart whenever I hear her dialogue. Why is she why is she here? Why is she in the middle of of hell on earth? Uh okay. Well, um I want to know more about your unit. The Blackstone Company is proud to be recognized as one of the finest Andoran mercenary regiments. We're not a bunch of unscrupulous shell swords looking to oppress the innocent and serve the tyrants of the world. No. We're adventurers eager to get involved. Eagle, eager to get involved in a dangerous enterprise and leave it with pockets full of gold and a clear conscience. Which is why we held a vote among our units. We were glad to accept Queen Golfrey's invitation to join the Crusade, though some of our commanders <coughs> did voice their displeasure with the sum she offered. But like I said, we Andorans are free people who cannot be pushed around and who cannot be bought, only convinced. Okay, I want to know about, more about you, Captain uh, Selkind. The man flashes a genuine smile. I don't even know what to share. I'm a soldier, a bit of an explorer. Just an all-around honest man. Okay. 
Get on with your duties then, Captain. Yes, sure. Glad to be under your command. Captain Silkind salutes you again, smiles, and adds in a softer voice. It will be an honor to show for you, Commander. If you have any questions, let me know. If you need to talk, I'd be happy to lend an ear. We have... We have... We have Sean Connery as a dad-like figure now. We've achieved something on stream. We have a Sean Connery dad-like figure. <laughs> so the three dwarven noble voices, Connery, Jonathan Reese davies and Billy Connolly. Aye, ah, so I was wandering down, down into the mines. And the thing with Billy Connolly is you just have to sort of draw every occasional word out. Hello there, it's me, Billy Connolly. <laughs> I do love Billy Connolly. He's a fucking fantastic comedian. And a real quirky guy. But yeah, his voice is quite unique. <laughs> I have an uncle that reminds me a lot of him. Um, let's have a look at the prison, because wasn't... Wasn't Arushale in the prison? Is that why she was showing up as uh, boob de boob Oh, no. She is not, but this little bitch is. I fucking knew you were a traitor, Nura. Nura bears her, bears her teeth like a cornered rat. Come to gloat. I need information. Do you? And why would I give it to you? Because helping me is your only chance to earn a pardon. Um... Oh boy. Have you seen his video videos on the history of swearing? He did one on the word fuck, which was phenomenal. Is that the one where he's like, uh, where he says about how like fuck is just like this universally understood word? Where, you know, like if you say like fuck off, <laughs> it doesn't matter what language you speak, you get it. <laughs> um, think about it and answer your own question. So you're just here to toy with me, you scumbag. Yes, I'm at your mercy. You can send me to the gallows or to the rack, but you think I'm going to roll over and just to save my hide? What's going to stop you from finding out everything you want and then hanging me all the same? On second thought, you know what? I don't care. I don't care about you or the demons or myself, especially not myself. What do you want? <laughs> she changed that pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that one is hilarious. It is hilarious. I like a lot of the... Um, like, I don't do it very often, but I like to go back and watch like the old... Uh, talk shows and the shows that he did in the in like the seventies and eighties. I like to go back and watch them because yeah, when he when he was young and and you know really really full of life, yeah, it's quite it's quite sad seeing him the way he is nowadays because like obviously the Parkinson's has, has really really affected him. You know, it's quite uh, quite sad. Um, who did you work for? The Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth, cultists of ba Baphomet. Some serve them for rewards, others serve them under dire threat. Some fools even think they'll learn transformation into demons. I only served because it was my chance at revenge. Oh, shit. Uh, even if you're a Tibetan monk and never spoken to another person, if someone says, hey, fuck off, they'll instantly understand and off they will fuck. <laughs> my fave movie of his is The Man Who Died God. The Man Who Died God? The Man Who Sued God? The man who sued God. I don't think I've seen it. I haven't really like I haven't watched a lot of films with him in. I was more like I'm more into like his stand up stuff. But yeah, no, I've I've not really watched a lot of movies. I know I know he's been in movies. Like I've seen movies that he's in. But I never I've never like focused in on any of his like movies as such. Um wait, where's my notepad? I don't think I have it with me. It's somewhere probably still in the bag of luggage that I need to unpack. Um, or at least finish unpacking. Let me go ahead and make a note of it. The man who sued God. Right, okay. I'll try and see if it's on like Netflix or Amazon or anything. Maybe give it a watch. Uh, the gla gla Grand Master leads the Templars. He's a mysterious figure said to be of an ideologue. Said to be more of an ideologue than an actual commander. All the cultists I know answer to a woman named Jerabeth. That sounds a lot like Irabeth. 
I never saw her myself, but I heard that she is dazzlingly beautiful. Okay, maybe it's not her ref. And when she speaks, you believe her every word, even if you know that she's lying through her teeth. I have absolutely no idea where to look for her, but I know there's someone much more powerful and dangerous, someone the common followers never see. Rumor has it, it's Baphomet's flesh and blood daughter. Something like reverence seeps into Nura's voice. Minago also gave me orders, but I don't think I can tell you anything new about her. You've met a few times already. I have indeed. Are there any other cultists in the Crusader army besides you? I think so, but everyone I knew has been caught by the Eagle Watch. Iribeth sent a lot of us to the gallows, but Baphomet will always find new servants. Always. Anyone could be a cultist, even Iribeth herself. <gasps> you think you can tell your friend from an enemy? Think again. Who is the leader of Discari's cultists? Discari's cultists are dumb meat. They can't hide. Only fight. But there are others among them, adepts of a higher rank, intelligent, dangerous wizards hiding somewhere in the world wound. Oh dear, oh dear. They are led by Xanfir, the plagued one. He isn't human. I don't know what he is, but he's not human, that's for sure. They say he doesn't even have a human body, only a mass of insects swarming under his robe. Who is that huge demon that attacked us during the battle? That was a Baylor named Darazand, the leader of those poor creatures who had been ordered to fill the ditches of Dresden with their own bodies and break the walls of the city with their own heads. He had them run drills every day, and every day they had to scrape someone off the ground. You're lucky that dwarf chased him off. Darazand alone could hold off a small army. He'll be back, and all of you will be as good as dead. Well, I have no more questions for now. Um, okay, do it. Oh, yeah. No, I have no more questions for now. I've got to go, Nora. I've got to go. Um, the synopsis is, after lawyer Steve Myers, so Billy Connolly abandons his career, he buys a boat and pursues a quiet life as a fisherman. His plans are obstructed when a bolt of lightning destroys his vessel and his insurance company tells him he isn't covered because the accident was an act of God. Teaming up with Anne, a journalist who's sympathetic to his plight, Steve sues God, who is represented in court by religious leaders. The defendants must give evidence of God's existence. I feel like maybe... I feel like I've maybe been, been in the room when I, with someone when I was younger who was watching. Like, like maybe my dad was watching that when I was younger. It rings a bell, but I don't think I've seen it. What swarm of bugs are they ripping off o Oogie Boogie? I think it's... I've, I don't think I've met the character yet, but I think it basically is like a ripoff of Oogie Boogie. I think it's like a pile of insects under a cloak. Um, Right, so is that... Is that kind of it? Is that like is that like my admin bits done for the day? Oh boy. I think it might be. I think I might have actually finished the logistics. Jeez. What's happening here? Oh, okay. Apparently we're out now. I was just stuck on a black screen for a while. Um What did I just do? There we go. So, are we executing the best, or are we leaving her to rot? I think I'm going to keep hold of her, because I want to I want to keep coming and uh, seeing if she's got any more information for me. She best have some more information. Oh, the brat. I was going to say, I was wondering why you were calling her the best. I just roll with it, okay? I just roll with it. Uh, so... Oh, exotic weapons provider. Blacksmith... Dorgalinda Stranglehold, Jewelry Trader, Arcane Weaver, Arisno. Which one's Arisno? I feel like I recognize that name. Who's Arisno? And also, where's Avu? Do I not have Avu with me anymore? Apparently not. Uh. Oh. Do I know you? I feel like I recognize your name. Maybe I'm getting you confused with someone else. A woman in gold embroidered cleric's robes greets you with a polite bow. Her eyes, the color of molten gold, gleam brightly in her dusky, uh, dusky face. Greetings, Commander. My name is Arisno. I am a messenger from the Temple of Abadar in Obsalem. And I came here assuming the defenders of the fortress could use the services of a cleric. Uh, perhaps you've heard about the wound that sometimes opens in my chest. <laughs> Are you familiar with this kind of element? Arisno quickly probes you with the skill of an experienced healer. 
So the word was right here, and then it disappeared and reappeared? Amazing. No, this is the first time I've ever heard of such magic. What do you think it might be? I think it's some kind of demonic corruption, or particles of chaos from the abyss that have entered through the wound into your body and made it so unstable. It sounds quite interesting, incidentally. Judging from the records of researchers of the abyss, stranger things have happened in this cursed place. Uh, can you give me some advice on how to heal it? I'm sure that you've already used the purification and chaos warding spells. And for obvious reasons, you do not have the option of leaving the campaign and going on a long pilgrimage to various shrines. Since that's the case, keep a diary. Make careful and systematic entries about your well-being. If it gets worse, record the circumstances under which it happens. I'm afraid this is the only advice I can offer right now. Uh... I want you to try to heal me. I'm sorry, but I do not have the right to do that. A healer who makes a blind attempt to heal a patient who is not on the verge of death is an irresponsible fool. You do not seem to be dying, so we will not make take any unnecessary risks. Jesus Christ, okay then. Uh, thank you. It all makes sense to me now. <laughs> okay, I've got to go. Because, um, like, I don't think the Crusade would go full Spanish Inquisition. Yeah. Yeah, that's... A yeah, no, I, ca I can't... I can't see... Uh I can't see, I can't see this specific crusade, our crusade, the Neighborino crusade, going full Flanders, full Flanders Inquisition. <laughs> I don't think it'll happen. I think, uh, I don't know. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get, I'm sure we'll get some information out of her. Like, I feel like if we keep her around, it might, I don't know, it could open up quest opportunities down the line, you know? Like, oh, you have option to, you have access to this option in dialogue or in um, in crusade management because Nura is still in your dungeon. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but I I think I I have to say today's stream has not been a stream of achieving great glory and conquest in in story in the story of the game. However, it has helped me to get back into the game. And it has kind of uh, been a nice logistics stream, getting all of the, or at least getting most of the characters created in the game uh, and leveling them up where needed. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up here.